What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking once again about intermittent fasting. A couple studies that just came out, one of them was a scoping review of randomized control, human randomized control trials. Yes, you know it. It looked at including human randomized control trials that looked at calorie restriction, intermittent fasting, and those that bucket of intermittent fasting included you're like 16 to eight intermittent fasting, alternate day fasting, the 5-2 diet, OMAD, you know, one meal a day, those sorts of things, like all the buckets that falls under intermittent fasting. And then they also looked at randomized control trials that were comparing the two. They were looking at effects on cardiometabolic markers, neuroprotective markers or, or markers of neurodegenerative disease and other markers of longevity. And what they found was that indeed, intermittent fasting seems to have a protective effect on a lot of these markers, these cardiometabolic markers, these neurodegenerative markers or neuroprotective markers, and on reducing body weight as well. So, looks to be good for longevity. But not better than regular old calorie restriction because both treatments work through the same mechanism, which is you eat less calories, you reduce your body weight, you have less body fat. Excess body fat is anti-longevity. Regardless of what some extremists in the healthy at every size movement will say, obesity very consistently is an independent risk factor for mortality, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. And behind smoking, it is the biggest lever out there that contributes to these diseases, to metabolic unhealthfulness, type two diabetes, cardiovascular disease, to cancer. And those are the biggest levers for shortening longevity if you're going the wrong direction. These studies, show and support that intermittent fasting is a great tool for controlling your calorie intake. But when you match calories in these studies between intermittent fasting and regular calorie restriction, they don't see differences in the effects on metabolic health, cardiometabolic risk factors, and these neuroprotective or neurodegenerative markers. If you like intermittent fasting, you like some form of intermittent fasting, great tool to use, but if you're somebody like me who just likes regular old calorie restriction, that's fine too. Now, I do wanna elaborate on this. When people hear calorie restriction, they think, well, that means I have to diet for the rest of time. No, I think what this literature shows, because most people are overweight or obese, now the majority of people are actually overweight or obese, for the majority of people, reducing their body weight and reducing their food intake to a normal level of body fat will extend longevity. It's actually not extending longevity, it's just getting you the longevity you would have gotten if you hadn't gained excess body fat. A lot of these studies that show improved longevity with calorie restriction, there's actually no studies in primates showing improved longevity with intermittent fasting, but I imagine if they did it, they would. But there are studies looking at calorie restriction in rhesus monkeys, these are very classic studies in nutrition, and did show an extension of lifespan with a 30% calorie restriction. Here's where it's important to understand how these studies are done. So I did a lot of animal research for my PhD. And what you have to realize is that animals in captivity overeat when they have free access to food. And the way researchers calculate calorie restriction is they simply take the amount of food that the animals are eating and then reduce it by a certain amount. So they took whatever these animals were eating and reduced it by 30%. What happened was these animals did not just lose a bunch of weight. In fact, most of them didn't really lose much weight. And if they did, it was just in the first few months. And then they basically just maintained. What these calorie restriction diets are doing is preventing these animals from becoming obese. And that is why likely they are living longer. If you are somebody who's already at a healthy body weight, you don't have to calorie restrict you're getting the benefits because you're metabolically healthy. But if you're somebody who's overweight or obese, you should pick the form of calorie restriction, whether it's intermittent fasting, whether it's a certain diet style, low carb, low fat, whatever, that you can adhere to consistently so that you can reduce your body weight into a healthy range because that is going to give you the returns on your longevity. Now you should also do things like resistance train and exercise regularly because it's not just about body weight, it's also about building muscle. Muscle is the longevity organ. Excess body fat is the mortality organ for lack of a better term. So once you have excess body fat, it does all kinds of stuff. It reduces insulin sensitivity. It 
typically means that your LDL cholesterol and a bunch of other cardiometabolic markers are gonna be out of whack. But if you reduce it, they will go back to normal for most people. And I wanna include, there was one more study that was just recently done where they looked at intermittent fasting, daily calorie restriction, or intermittent fasting with a probiotic. And they were looking to see what happened to body weight and some other health markers. And basically what they showed was that they had the exact same results. And this was in women with PCOS. So a lot of times people will say, well, you know, it didn't work in the, this population, but you know, people who are insulin, less insulin sensitive, they are the ones who need intermittent fasting. The research has very clearly shown now in multiple populations from lean, normal, healthy, obese, type two diabetic, now PCOS, that when you equate calories between these conditions, whether it's intermittent fasting or regular calorie restriction, that you have similar outcomes in body weight, body fat, and health markers. You have to pick a form of restriction if you would like to lose weight, but you should choose the form of restriction that feels the least restrictive to you because it's probably gonna be the one that you can best manage over time. And that is why our app, Carbon Diet Coach, does not pigeonhole you into any one way of dieting. You can choose from low carb, you can intermittent fast, you can do a more balanced approach, you can do low fat, you can do any different type of diet with Carbon Diet Coach. If you want nutritional guidance, it's only 10 bucks a month and fits in your pocket, go check out my app, Carbon Diet Coach, at the link's in the description, and I'll catch you guys next week.